It was the dropping of arms by foreign mercenaries in Purulia district of West Bengal, which once again brought to focus at the fag end of 1995 the sinister designs of neighboring countries to undermine India's security. Home Ministry sources claimed that the finger of suspicion pointed to the Pakistan ISI. A high-level committee was set up to look into this breach of security of the country's airspace. National security was again the issue with Kashmir in the news throughout 1995 for what the government claimed was Pakistan's insidious attempt to foment proxy war in the region. The last three years or so, Pakistan has literally lost its, its proxy war. Now it's a question of keeping up the, the, the conflict alive through residual violence, and that's why the nature of violence is altered in, 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 in that part. And, and the biggest thing at the moment from their point of view would be to try and disrupt the move towards political activity, towards returning to a political process which, will, uh, which should logically lead to elections. Because that happens, Pakistan has this biggest uh, problem that having started off the, the whole uh, proxy war in Kashmir, uh, they are finding it difficult to disengage. After months of deliberations, the government decided to hold elections for the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly in December of 1995 following an overall improvement in the law and order situation there, with militancy having been curbed to a great extent. But the Election Commission threw a spanner in the government's plan when it announced that it had unanimously arrived at the decision that the conditions in the state were not conducive for polls. The sum total of factors available at present in the state of Jammu and Kashmir are not consistent with the conduct of a fair and free election. The Election Commission's decision was challenged by way of a public interest litigation in the Supreme Court, and the government has shown no let up in its determination to conduct polls in the state in the near future. Although all parties had broadly agreed to the necessity of holding polls in Kashmir, there were sharp differences as to when they should be held. And the national conference leader, Mr. Farooq Abdullah, was categorical that elections were necessary, but the time was not ripe. The conditions are not conducive enough, particularly in the valley and the areas of Doda and areas of Punch and Rajori and higher areas of Jammu in Udhampur, where free and fair poll cannot be held. Earlier, too, the government was determined to go to the hustings in the valley, but at that juncture, the militants, under instructions from their agent provocateur from across the border, set afire the sanctum sanctorium of the Sufi shrine at Charare Sharif, which gave a setback to the central government's efforts to initiate a democratic process in the troubled state. The Afghan mercenary Mast Gul, who set ablaze the holy shrine, later surfaced in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, where he was hailed as a hero. However, observers contend that in 1995, the ground realities at present in Jammu and Kashmir was more conducive to political activities. The massive rally held by the Congress party in Baramula, followed by other such political functions, were cited as examples. <laughs> I personally feel that at this stage, there was a need to do something on Kashmir. Now, we can quibble about whether uh, we could have done it a few months later or not. But I think that there was a certain imperative which was building upon the government. The attempts by Pakistan to keep Kashmir in the international focus was highlighted when a foreign mercenary gang operating in the scenic mountainscape of Pehelgaon kidnapped six foreign tourists asking for the release of dreaded militants arrested by Indian security forces in exchange. While the American tourist John Childs managed to escape, it was the gruesome murder of the Norwegian tourist Hans Christian Ostro, whose beheaded body was discovered in the Pehelgaon forests which brought about international condemnation of the militants. With the government of India refusing to give in to their demands, the year comes to an end with four hostages still with the Al-Faran mercenaries, now in custody for over six months. <laughs> 